Hey guys, Keith here with another Impact Wrestling review. So we are two weeks removed from Bound for Glory, and uh, I thought Impact put on a really solid show tonight from top to bottom. We actually had all the matches take place in the Impact Zone, I guess if that's what you want to call it from now on, um, since I don't know where their next set of tapings are going to be. Probably in Canada, because it seems like that is their plan, as we've kind of learned that they're going to remove or eventually disband all the Nashville offices and move them up to Canada. That's the rumor anyway. I don't know if there's actual confirmation on that. Um, but yeah, this was top to bottom, a really solid show. So I've been doing these reviews for three months about, and this really feels like an alternative to WWE anyway, their direction. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of people that don't agree with that, but a lot of people don't want to give them a chance, and they kind of just see TNA, GFW, Impact, and just label it as crap. Uh, this kind of goes back to my initial video where uh, I believe Destination X, where I kind of said that I wanted to make this a review that kind of gives shed some light on Impact and shows that they really are uh, an option out there. Um, so we open the show, well, actually, before... We get to the ring. Um, backstage is basically a preview for the main event tonight where P.D. Williams challenges for Eli Drake's global title. But we open the show with a match. And it is a six-man X Division match with uh, Ishimori, Trevor Lee, and Caleb Conley versus Sonjay Dutt, Desmond Xavier, and Garza Jr. So one thing I did notice during the, uh, the intro was uh, when Trevor's, Trevor Lee's name pops up on the bottom and it kind of shows that he's the uh, Impact cha the Impact Champion, the X Division Champion. Uh, they had the title still say Global Force on it, so a little editing thing they should have probably fixed. Um, I know there's been a lot of people complaining about the title still having, I guess, a plate. It's actually a plate, not a sticker, over any Global Force that it had uh, originally said, because I actually took a screenshot of when Eli came out with the title later on, and you can see that it's probably a, a good eighth, quarter inch thick uh, plate on there. But uh, yeah, just one of the minor things. I was really hoping they would have had new belts by now, but I do re realize the company is cutting costs, and you know, this really isn't a thing that's going to change the product or how it's, per I, well, I guess it is how it's perceived, but it still doesn't change the action that takes place in the ring. Uh, another thing I noticed, I don't know if this happened last week as well, but it seemed like the, uh, the lighting was dim in the audience. I'm sure this was probably done because I believe the first or the night of impact tapings, which I'm sure the beginning of this was a part of, but they had a lower turnout in the audience. So I'm guessing it was more or less to hide the fact that there wasn't as many fans in the audience, but I think it looked a lot better because it really made you focus on the ring rather than the audience behind them. Because I noticed in the impact zone where it was very bright, you would kind of see all the audience members and you'd see it was the same people week after week and it, it, it kind of took away from the product. But uh, anyway, back to the X Division uh, six-man tag match. Uh, this was a really good uh, a really good match. It was a good match. Um, you know, not, not, not too much to say here. These X Division matches always, always have some decent spots. Uh, Desmond Xavier looked great again. Um, I don't know the reasoning for the Ishimori tagging with uh, Trevor Lee and Caleb Conley because I didn't think he was a heel, but maybe I was wrong. Uh, we got a couple of moments where there was incidental contact between Ishimori and Trevor Lee. I think it was twice with him and then once with Caleb Conley. Um, but Desmond Xavier ends up picking up the win after hitting uh, Conley with the final flash, which is basically a corkscrew swanton. Um... But yeah, like I said, a good match. Good way to open the show. Uh, then we get a Sammy Callahan OVE uh, video hyping their match with LAX later on tonight. Um, they basically say that they are equal opportunity haters, and this is going to be family versus family. So up next, we have Falava versus EC3 for the Grand Championship. 
Um, this was probably the low point of the show for me anyway. Um, that no real build to this. It was just kind of thrown in there. Uh, we, we did see either, I believe last week where, uh, EC3 came out after, uh, Matt Seidel's match with, I don't remember who he was wrestling, but, uh, but anyway, he was basically calling him out and saying that he's always, you know, kind of faded away when the spotlight was on him. So uh, I would assume we're going to get that in the future. But like I said, this is kind of a random match. Um, there was a funny moment before the match. Uh, EC3 was walking up to the ring and there was a guy with a Kenny Omega shirt on. And uh, EC3 kind of just like said he was trash or something to that extent. But uh, it really kind of goes to show that there's not much impact merchandise out there to really have the fans represent. I mean, you had a bunch of LAX shirts and maybe there was a couple of Johnny impacts and some fan made shirts, but not too much. Uh, I'd like to see them maybe push the merchandise a little more. Again, the cost cutting, I understand, but if you don't have the merchandise, it's hard for them to represent your brand. Uh, so Falaba won the first fall not the first full, the first round, I'm sorry. Um, EC3 kind of uh, was mocking him throughout this round, and he took advantage of it and got the upper hand. Uh, in the second round, EC3 dominated uh, because uh, Ba went after him and ran shoulder first into the ring post, so obviously EC3 took advantage of that. And then EC3 eventually got the win in round three when he used the ropes for leverage and kind of rolled them up. So again... Nothing special here. It was a, it was probably more of a clash of two different styles. Um, yeah. So up next, we had LAX versus OVE. Uh, this was a really good match. Uh, it even got a This Is Awesome chant from the crowd, which I, you don't hear, hear too much in Impact. Anyway, I'm not used to it. Um, but yeah, it started out with a brawl in and out of the ring, a couple of flips over the ropes to the outside and then just like i said brawling uh we eventually got things underway in the in the ring um ov was is playing the heel now apparently which is funny because i guess originally they were brought in as faces and then I, almost when sammy callahan inserted himself it was like a double double turn um th there was a lot of lax shirts in the crowd so uh yeah, and uh, they were hyping the crowd during to get underway, you know, uh, involved in the match. But, uh, yeah, like I said, they were kind of playing the heel role here where they were isolating one man of LAX, and they were kind of using the referee to their advantage. That was one other thing I noticed, and I, I think people had also pointed this out in the last at least two weeks and bound for glory that the uh, referees seemed to be getting in the way. Uh, I noticed that happened in this match a few times and i think in a match later on it did happen as well but um yeah i guess with new referees it's kind of hard for them to know where to be especially in the six-sided ring i don't know how many of these referees were used to working that way but uh yeah again like i said we got some back and forth action and eventually santana pins jake christ after a power bomb blockbuster combination but yeah this was a fun match like i said the crowd was into it uh, this is awesome chance and uh we got some good spots so I'm, I'm sure people have seen that there is going to be a special stipulation match between these two teams it was all over the internet and uh i'm not going to spoil it for people that don't know but it's it looks like it's going to be something something else because it's different and uh we haven't seen it in a while after that, we get the uh, Global Wrestling Network flashback moment of the week where Ken Shamrock won the NWA title. I believe this was from the first episode, uh, the Gauntlet for the Gold. Uh, I might be wrong, but I think that's the only time Shamrock held the title. Uh, I plan on doing a Global Wrestling Network review. I haven't played with it yet. I did get the first the three-month subscription free when I ordered Bound for Glory, so that'll be a future video. So up next, I thought this was really good, and I am was not a fan of American Top Team, but uh, Dan Lambert comes out, and he says that he did exactly what they were going to do at Bound for Glory, 
And he runs down Canada and Canadians and pro wrestling fans saying, you know, the whole uh, screw job of Survivor Series. But uh, he's he says he's here because Impact Wrestling went back on their word and wouldn't grant Bobby Lashley his release, even though he followed through with uh, with their question with their um, I guess their their want of him to fulfill the contract where which is him performing at Bound for Glory. And he, he basically said that no one in this in the company is safe until Lashley's contract is signed or his release is signed, which he was carrying with him to the ring. Um, it, it's it's funny. It seems like Dan Lambert is playing all the fans that hate Impact because it's just some of the things that he said. You know, he says the company is out of money and things like that, and it's just things you always hear on the internet. And I really like this. Um, so yeah, Moose eventually comes out and he he said, you know, uh, it's, it's a silly thing. You came here uh, by yourself, but it uh, took six men to take me out at Bound for Glory. So he goes to the ring and he starts to go after Lambert. Of course, American Top Team comes out. They beat down Moose. And then all of a sudden, James Storm comes out. And uh, this is a really good moment, too, because he grabs the mic. And uh, oh, I should say that before this, that Lambert really gets the crowd against him. So uh, he is definitely someone that can draw some heat. But uh, like I said, Storm comes down, cleans house, uh, grabs the mic, and, you know, he runs down Dan Lambert, and then he goes on about his history and how he became, you know, basically where he is today, and then, you know, how he's learned lessons throughout his career and how great pro wrestling was. It was a really good promo by him, which... uh, Unfortunately, we know some things that are going to happen in the future. His contract is up January 1st, so I'm not too sure what his plans are afterward. But um, this was a funny... That was the end of the segment, and uh, this was a funny segment, too. We get uh, American Top Team backstage. I guess they were leaving the building when all of a sudden KM walks up to them, and they go. he goes, I really like you guys. I really like the way you conduct business. I, I want to be a part of your team. And Lambert tells him to get lost and go back to the circus and whatnot. And uh, then he sees Bobby Lashley uh, follow him behind. And he goes, Bobby, I, I really want a chance to, to be a part of the group. And Lashley looks at him and goes, you want a chance? Prove yourself. So I'm kind of interested to see where they go with this. Uh, kind of out of left field here. Uh, then we get uh, Mackenzie backstage with Eli and Chris Adonis. And Eli basically runs down P- Petey for their match later on tonight. And then we get another backstage segment with uh, Allie and Gail Kim. Allie was basically thanking Gail for all she's done and that she's been a huge inspiration for her. This has been one of my pet peeves where we have, I think we had, what, two two matches back-to-back? Three matches. And then all of a sudden we got a bunch of backstage segments. Um, the American top team, you know, in the ring and then backstage, that's fine together. But the other ones you could have had between the matches. I don't know, it's just... It's just a pet peeve of mine. I don't know if other people feel the same way. Um, So after this, Gail Kim comes to the ring, and uh, Allie comes out as well because she wants to be there for support. And Gail Kim gives a heartfelt speech about her career and living out her dreams and telling people to never give up on their dreams. And she says she is relinquishing the title and then gives well wishes to the rest of the, uh, the knockouts. So this is kind of what I said was going to happen back in my Bound for Glory preview and predictions video where Gail was going to win the title and then he's just going to vacate it and maybe getting a tournament, but we're not sure what their plan is after this. Um, So that brings us backstage where Grado and a bunch of other wrestlers were sitting down to eat and Joseph Park comes and sits down with them, and everybody gets up from the table except for Grado, and he's completely surprised by this. So he sits down next to Grado, and he, he says, you know, I'm really sorry for what I did. Uh, I now know that I am the monster abyss and that he we will never see him again. Um, so he says, Grado, I have your visa right here. So he hands it to him. And then all of a sudden a Mountie comes up, and he asks which one is Grado, and then Grado says, who's asking? And he says, your visa's only good in the U.S., and then hauls him off. And 
it was just funny. So uh, I guess we're still going on with that. And then we go up to the main event of uh, P.D. Williams versus Eli Drake for the Global Championship. So before we get to the main event, uh, Borash is going to be in the ring introducing the two competitors, and Josh Matthews is sitting there by himself where he is joined by his good pal Jimmy Jacobs. And uh, Jimmy asks Josh, he's like, how come you haven't posted that selfie online? Uh, Are you afraid of what the company is going to do? So it's a little shot at WWE, which is funny. And... uh, as we know i guess jacobs is working or has some sort of role backstage so i've liked his work in the past i mentioned on my our raw or smackdown review that he had done some of the Miz's segments where that's really elevated his career so i'm curious to see what he does here hopefully uh good things but yeah to the main event of eli drake defending his global championship against pd williams this was a fun match um this was kind of i wouldn't say david versus goliath but there was an obvious advantage for eli drake um throughout the beginning of the match he was really using his size and strength while pd was using his quickness so kind of a typical story of a big versus smaller opponent uh pd ends up hitting the canadian destroyer and eli kicks out at two uh the crowd was really into this one as well um So Petey goes for another Canadian Destroyer, and Eli has a counter for that, drops him down, and gets a two-count near fall. So they trade near falls back and forth, and Petey sets up for another Canadian Destroyer, but this time Eli is able to counter it into the gravy train and wins the match. Um, Eli's been looking better and better as a champion. Um... Chris Adonis, I think, maybe got involved once. That was it. There was one point where Petey did a suicide dive to take out Adonis before he hit the first uh, Canadian Destroyer. So they made it a big thing that nobody has kicked out of the Canadian Destroyer in Impact Wrestling. So obviously you knew that was kind of going to play a part tonight. But Petey looked good. Eli looked good. I'm sure there's going to be some match between Eli and Impact and Al Patron, but uh, I believe they had mentioned earlier in the broadcast that uh, Impact and El Patron were both banned from the arena tonight, so we did not see either of them at all. Um, But yeah, this was a good way to close the show. Like I said, I enjoyed the show top to bottom. Um, if they keep producing shows like this, I, I, I can't see why people wouldn't catch on and at least give them a chance to watch it. Um, a lot of the stuff you read online is not necessarily true about the company. They, uh, yeah, they, they've really, I, I think, have elevated themselves to be another alternative for WWE, at least until one of New Japan or Ring of Honor gets either a better TV deal when New Japan moves into the U.S., but I would really like to see all of them team up and try to, well, not take out WWE altogether, but at least give them a run for their money because then WWE will have to elevate their product because that's what happened during the uh, Monday Night Wars. But yeah, uh, I'll, enough with the rambling. So uh, this has been my Impact Wrestling Review. I would love to hear from you guys in the comments below. Uh, Otherwise, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye.